Okay, welcome back, ENG uh, 360, and today we're going to look at listing 316 from your textbook. So let's do a new project, and let's browse to wherever that guy is. I think that's probably in the Chapter 3 section, and um, yeah, we'll put it in Chapter 3, and we'll call this guy listing uh, 316. How about that? 316, okay? And then these are all right, Spartan 3E, XCS 3S 500E, um, Flatgood 320, VHDL, okay, that's good, VHDL 93, yeah, let's just leave that there. And then gives me some information, uh, everything just kind of summarizes what I selected. And now I've got an empty project, there's the chip right there. Um, implementation, I'm going to change that to simulation, all right. So I've got my simulation selected, and we got some process uh, capability down here. All right, well, first thing we need to do is add a new source. Let's add a new source, and let's see, we'll call this guy VHDL module. And um, what do we want to call this? VHDL module. Let's call this guy barrel shifter. Okay, barrel shifter. Yeah. VHDL module, barrel shifter. Next, I'll go ahead and type the um, entity in by hand and then finish up here. All right, let's take out the comment statements just because, you know, we have limited real estate when we do these uh, videos. All right, so here is my library part. I'm using the IEEE library. I'm using the standard Logic 1164 package within that library, bringing all of the uh, stuff inside that package into scope here. There's my entity. Currently, it's empty because I didn't use that little wizard to populate it. And then here's my architecture block. Well, first thing I'm going to do is copy and paste um, the contents of the entity. So let's do that. And here you see the entity. Okay, the entity consists of a port statement. I've got three variables, A, A amount, and Y. A is an input, all right, so it's standard logic vector. So this barrel shifter has eight bits coming in. So it's basically an eight-bit register, okay, eight bits coming in. And then there's also this thing called a mount, AMT. Well, that's also an input, and that's three bits. So three bits can represent zero through seven, and that's basically the amount that I'm going to shift A before it appears at the output Y. And Y, of course, is your output. So A is the input, eight bits. Y is the output, eight bits. And then amount is a control signal that's going to shift um, the input before it appears at the output. If we don't shift anything, then A goes straight to Y. All right. So let's go ahead and implement this. Well, we could do the implementation of this guy with a... Um, just uh, actually one statement, um, a simple uh, conditional signal assignment statement or a select signal assignment statement. And what I am going to use is a select signal assignment statement. So I've got my architecture block here. I don't need any internal variables. It's just this is fairly a straightforward problem. But what I can do is I can use a select statement where I key on amount. Amount is how much I shift. Well, when amount equals zero, I don't shift anything. I map A straight to Y. Okay. Now, when amount is equal to 001, then what I do is I take the contents of my A register, I shift it right one bit, and then I take that rightmost bit, wrap it around, and that becomes my most significant bit. When amount is equal to two, I'm going to shift two bits to the right. So now seven, bit seven down to bit two are on the right side, and then bits one and bits zero get concatenated up on the left because we've wrapped them around. Okay? And then down here, when uh, let's see, the last case is when amount is equal to seven. Well, then what we're doing there is we're taking an eight bit quantity, shifting it all the way down seven. So then I've got A7 down here, and then bits six through zero get wrapped around up there. And then all these guys are concatenated together to give an eight bit result that it gets assigned to Y. And there you go, there's a simple barrel shifter. All right, so let's uh, highlight that. Let's make sure our syntax is correct. And we're done. So at this point right here, let's go ahead and set up a test bench file on this. Now we're in simulation, so I select the project. I do project new source. And let's see what we want to do here. Let's call this test bench on barrel shifter. Test bench on barrel shifter. Okay. Make sure I've got my VHDL test bench selected, a VHDL test bench. And then uh, it's going to say, what component do you want to test? Well, we only have one component here, barrel shifter. Next, finish. And now what it did is it added my test bench file. Okay. 
Here's my actual component, the unit under test. This is my test bench file, and of course it put all the comment statements in there. Let's go ahead and take out all the comments. Okay. And let's see what we have here. Well, we have our usual library stuff. We have the entity, all right? And then I have an architecture. Now it's using the 87 format, so I have to declare um, my component, which is barrel shifter before I use it, and that's fine. Okay. And then I've got some inputs here. Well, these that take on the name of the barrel shifter component, uh, but let's just put TB in front of them so we can distinguish them. And then I've got some out, an output, Y, test bench files. Now in this one here, I'm not using a clock, so let's get rid of the clock. And here is where we instantiate it, okay? Up here is where we declared it. And the begin end block of the architecture is where we instantiate it. And then it stubs out two processes. I'm not using a clock process, so let's get rid of this. And we'll use our stimulation process. And um, yeah, let's just do this. Let's come down to here and say test bench AMT takes on the value of, um, let's just do no shift. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll wait for maybe, oh, I don't know what, uh, 50 nanoseconds, and then we'll just hit a couple of these guys in here to see if it works. And here we'll shift one bit, and then down here we'll shift two bits, and then we'll wait. And then down at the bottom, I, um, I can wait indefinitely, but I think the assert false will work better. And let's see, how do I do that? I think if I remember right, assert false, and then report and then what uh, severity, they, I, I never have this memorized. I should think by now I'd have that memorized. Let's just try that. All right, let's save this guy. Let's go back to my unit under test. Make sure that guy has a green check mark on compile. And then my test bench, all right, let's uh, com check the syntax on that. Oops, looks like I've got some errors on there. What's going on in my syntax? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, you gotta, we didn't map the variables. These are the variables of the component. On the right are the variables of the uh, test bench file. Yeah, I gotta change those. I changed those up above. I didn't change them down to here. All right, All right test bench. All right. Let's save that. All right. Let's go back and do my component, even though I haven't changed anything. Do my test bench, behavioral check syntax on that. Okay, looks good. And now make sure test bench is selected and let's do a simulate behavior model. And let's see, we should get the simulator popping up here any minute. Well, my machine's really slow. And there we go. And let's see, yeah, so I've zoomed out here. Now you can see that A currently takes on the value of zero, 00. I didn't put anything in A, did I? Okay, that's great. And then my amount is I'm taking zero and I'm shifting it by zero, and of course I get zero at the output, okay? Now I'm taking zero, I'm shifting by one, I get zero at the output, I'm taking zero, I shift by one, and I get um, uh, zero at the output. So that was really an uninteresting case, right? We put zero into there and we uh, shifted it, and lo and behold, it was still zero. All right, well, let's try to do something a little more interesting here. Let's come along and set up my A variable, all right, to take on a value, test bench A. And let's see, what value would be interesting here? Something that we shift that will actually change the components. How about, oh, let's see, one, zero, one, zero. Well, we don't want it too symmetric because that's going to cause us problems. How about that? Yeah. So that would be one, zero, one, one. And then, um, yeah, that's fine. We'll just do that. Yeah. Okay. So at that point, let's see. Let's uh, recompile my component, even though I didn't change anything. Test bench. Let's recompile or behavioral check syntax on that. Make sure test bench is selected and then double click simulate behavior model. And let's see what happens. Zoom to full view, and let's see. Okay, so we have our initial weight that we don't do anything. 
and then I load up that bit pattern. It's B6. If I right click this and do radix binary, you can see it's you know one zero one one zero one one zero. And then I am setting my shift amount to one and I get five B. Do a radix binary on that and take a look what happened. We shifted it to the right one. Alright, when we shift it to the right, well that one zero one one kind of moved one over to the right. 1011 and then the 011 moved over to the right and that zero bit wrapped around to the most significant bit and we got 5b okay now over here when we shifted two bits well we had 1010110 and then we shifted right two well i'm going to lose that one and zero but that one zero is going to appear up top here and then a 101101 is going to be the remaining six bits 101101 and then um, this was your input and this is your output and they are a little different. Let's go back to hex and we can kind of see it a little easier. Yeah, so I had B6, I, sh I did a shift one, shift right one with a roll around and that became a B5. I had B6 and I did a shift right uh, two with a wrap around and I got AD and there you go. Uh, that is your um, barrel shifter. All right, I'm gonna stop right here. See you next time.